Hello everyone and welcome to Mexico City. This is one of the most populated and urbanized areas on the planet. Not exactly the most obvious place to be looking for wildlife, but I'm here to look for creatures that many of the locals here don't even know exist. Now on the face of it, Mexico City may seem completely devoid of all natural life. But here and in the surrounding area lives a mysterious nocturnal mammal which not that many people know a lot about. I've just come across this wilder area which has given me a little bit more optimism that there could be some really cool life here. Just look at these amazing black volcanic rocks. They're fairly typical of Mexico City and they're providing the perfect arena for things like wall lizards to bask and defend their territories. Realistically, if we want to get a really good idea about all the exciting animals that live in this area, we're going to have to study it at night. And for that, we're going to have to recruit my old friend, the camera trapper. <laughs> Well, this is looking promising. The banana has gone, so whatever's eaten it should hopefully be on the camera. Oh, wow, okay. I think I know what that animal is. You can tell by that long, hairless tail that that's an opossum. And they're absolutely wonderful. They're marsupials. They're just like kangaroos and koalas that you'd find in Australia. Oh, wait, oh, hang on. That looks like a completely different creature. My guess on that one was one of two species. It's either a ringtail or an animal called a caca missile. Now both those animals you've probably never heard of before, but here they are, right in the middle of one of the busiest cities in the world. We're slap bang in the middle of Mexico City at the moment. Now that's all very well, but a few brief tail glimpses aren't going to do it for me. I'm now travelling to Morelos, which is the neighbouring state to Mexico City, where apparently there are caca missiles in abundance. So hopefully this should be the ideal place to find out more about their weird biology. I'm in the state capital at the moment, Cuesnavaca, and it is quite a busy city really. But in my opinion the relationship between the people there and the local wildlife is a lot healthier. So that should hopefully mean we stand a better chance of getting even more amazing shots of our caca missile. We know there's one in the area, and there probably is just one actually, because although we still know very little about the biology of these animals, they do seem to be very territorial and highly solitary. So it probably is just one. We've set up a camera trap over there, which will follow the movement of these animals during the night when we're not here. And to entice them in, we've got a nice bit of mouldy banana. Oh, irresistible. So we're going to put some along the walls here and in the garden and let's hope we get lucky. I'm about to climb up what's called the Tip or Stick or it's an ancient Aztec pyramid on the top of a mountain which is around 2,000 meters above sea level. And at the top of it, there are apparently some animals which actually aren't too bothered by humans. And what makes them related to our caca is that they're also part of the raccoon family. friends have arrived. Oh my god, look at these guys. These are wide-nosed coates. But unlike our caca missile, these guys are diurnal. They're active during the day. The caca missile is active only at night and that's why it's so difficult to see. Yes, I'm giving you food. Come on. <laughs> these guys have clearly evolved to be opportunists, especially in places where there's tourists and where there's food. In terms of habits as well, they have got quite a, a primate-esque behaviour, if you like. Look at that long tail. That's used to move through the treetops um, in very much the same way as a monkey or other primate would. You want to grab one of my trousers? I don't want them to get too comfortable with me, actually, because, I mean, I'm not here all day. 
I don't want them to follow me down the mountain. <laughs> Did you have a nice sleep, cameraman? Good. Should we go and check the camera traps then? Lovely. Well, what are you standing there for? Let's get on with it. Oh, my word. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that. That is a caca missile or a ringtail, but I'm pretty sure it's a caca missile in the most perfect position in front of the camera, eating the banana that we put down for it. The name Caca Missile comes from Nahuatl, which is an ancient Mexican language, and it translates to half cat, which is pretty accurate, actually, because what I find so weird about the Caca Missile, it looks like an amalgamation of different animals. You've got features of it which look like a dog. You've got features, the face in particular, looks a lot like a cat. You've got that bushy tail which looks like a primate, like a lemur or something like that. It's carved out a completely unique niche for itself. Well, how about that then? I never would have guessed that we'd get such amazing shots of an animal that science knows very little about all in the space of just a few days. And that's what really excites me about ecology, really. The fact that to this day, we still don't completely know how every organism fits into its environment and its ecosystem. And the caca missile is a perfect example of that. What an amazing animal. Thank you very much for watching this. Very kind of you, of course. Um, if you want to see more, then why not head over to Instagram and follow my at Benito Explains account where you'll receive exclusive wildlife and science content. Go on, go and do it right now. You'll find the link in the description below this video. Get at it!